This program is made possible by grants from the Albert Pick Jr. Fund and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Can I ask you gentlemen something? Have you ever heard of the Messiah? Handel's Messiah? Of right. course. You mean the music? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, surely. Yeah. You mean the, um, you're talking about the, uh, the music, right? The, um, what is it? It's like, um, yes, I've heard of it. It's an oratorio by Handel, and it's called Messiah. It's an oratorio by George Frederick Handel. Uh, do it yourself, Messiah? <laughs> do it yourself, Messiah? I don't know, I never heard. Uh, you mean at the orchestra hall uh -huh. where they all get together every yeah. year? Yeah. Um, where everyone, anyone who plays an instrument or sings can join in. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. 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 It seems that we're getting so uh, professional. It looks like about another year or two, they'll be hiring us all out. <laughs> I think that um, something should be said about the people who are sitting in the box. The man is Al Booth. His work is real estate. His passion is music. That includes raising the money to do a weekly live music series and this event. In 1974, living in England, he attended a local church at Christmas time. They sang the Messiah. The entire chorus was made up of people like himself, amateurs. You know, when we came out of that church, we felt that we had uh, been through an experience that was hard to match. It was something that uh, I wanted the, my friends, the people in Chicago or whoever they were that liked music, 
uh, who's saying the Messiah at some time or other to have the same kind of experience that we had had. When Booth returned to America, he brought the do-it-yourself Messiah home with him to Chicago. This is its third season. Anyone can attend free, as long as tickets last. Everyone except the soloists is an amateur, and only the orchestra rehearses. The conductor of this huge enterprise is Margaret Hillis. She is choral director of the Chicago Symphony, has her own orchestra in Elgin, Illinois, and does a great deal of guest conducting around the country. This messiah requires all her skill and her sense of humor. She calls herself the Lady Baritone. Well, Al Booth, I had never heard of him before, and he called me up just out of a blue sky and uh, came up to see me. And he told me about this wonderful thing and that he wanted to do that here. Would I conduct? I knew when the first one was over, it would be a, an annual event and I'd be doing it for the rest of my life, the way old Handy always did. The work, Messiah of Handel, is probably the granddaddy of all Western music. Beethoven put it under his pillow at night. There is only one short section in it that has anything to do with Christmas, because the theme of the piece overall is uh, the redemption of man uh, by God, by sending a Messiah to the earth. This piece has, through the ages, had some very bad performances. They're often done in a very slow and very ponderous way in church. And I'd like to do Handel a favor and change that. The last, if you would count with me, please. One, two, three, The orchestra, except for last year and the year before, I'd never seen before. And there are many new people in it this year, and many repeaters from the last two years. They come from amateur orchestras all over the area. Uh, there are some excellent players. There are some who just play one or two days a week, haven't really kept up their techniques, but they're in there and practicing and working very hard. Once again, please, letter D. And you're going to have to do some practice at home. This has got to be in tune, because you are exposed. D for Denver. And, uh, mm. Long quarter. Because everybody knows this piece. When it starts, everybody always rushes. It has to be exactly the previous tempo. Bum, bum, bim, bum, bim, bum, bum. No faster, or all sorts of people are in trouble. Again, please. And tick, 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 better. OK, and that's better. But we're getting bum, 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 into bum, bum, bim, bum. Uh, Always give your of course, with the orchestra, they have to be, in a very short time, um, made into an instrument, a cohesive instrument that plays together, that listens, uh, that has tempo control, as uh, getting them to internalize the matter of count, because if they don't count, there's uh, no conductor can keep them together. Uh, then also getting them to listen. The quality of the sound in three rehearsals uh, improved just incredibly. Martellato. That's it. No accent. Sorry. Three before B. One, two, three before I uh, usually end up trusting them, in spite of the fact that I get very impatient uh, along the line, because comes the day of the performance, they come through. Once again, please, two before letter A. Those of you who want to take your music home with you tonight, would you please tell me about it at the rear when you're through with the rehearsal? I was called up on the telephone and asked if I would play. And uh, I said, sure. 
so, somebody recommended them. I assume that... I've heard the Chicago Symphony play, and I never thought I'd be able to sit in their seats, <laughs> although I'm an amateur. <laughs> so this is the only chance I ever get to sit in the seat of the Chicago Symphony players. The musicians come from all over the Chicago area. Harry Porterfield, a TV anchorman at the local CBS station. He's played in the do-it-yourself messiah twice before. Well, I started taking uh, violin lessons when I was eight years old, and uh, like I think uh, anyone who is, is forced to study music at an early age, I hated it. Something happened along the way. I began to enjoy it and always made the point to be to be part of some kind of musical organization. You would picture her up there, and she has this orchestra of people who've never met one another before, you know. Um, from every cultural, and I suspect ethnic background, and they're all there because they love playing music, and they've only had three times to play together, and not all of them at the same time. It's 10 before letter G. Here we go. Steady as she goes, you'll be blown off the sea. And bump, 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 beep, bump, that's better. Ting, 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 that's better. All right. We do it once in a second. Listen to how they play it. And uh, then you play it for better. And so the challenge is to stand there, and they're the focus of attention, and television cameras are there, and uh, you've got to coordinate this awesome effort, and I, I'm, I'm sure that, that she looks upon it as a challenge to make it all work. And I've played with many small orchestras, but uh, I can't ever remember having an experience like that in a performance. I am a reporter anchor man in this shop, uh, during the day, I spend my time uh, doing stories. I'm also co-anchor of our 6 o'clock broadcast Monday through Friday. Uh, that's what I am. That's what I do. We'll take a stab at it tomorrow. See if I can get it done. And uh, I'm going to try and deliver one every week if I possibly can. Uh, I think now I have some support for it. Yeah, uh, we got a lot of phone calls on it. I enjoy playing the Messiah. Whenever I can, I play the Messiah. And I remember uh, Miss Hillis had a run-through, just, just kind of a, uh, a brief rehearsal, the night of the performance, just to make sure that the chorus and the orchestra were together. And we played a few bars of that opening selection, and then the chorus began to sing. And I can't describe the experience, the feeling I had there are vibrations that begin to run up and down my spine, undulations I've never felt before in my life. Um, it was a chilling experience to hear so many people singing the Messiah. It's a very beautiful work, as you know. And at that moment, I, I realized, one, this would be an annual thing, and two, that I would want to be a part of it as long as I possibly could be. <laughs> It is a happening, but I think it's the kind of uh, happening that, that, that should attract uh, people of all ages, anyone who enjoys singing. You know, there are no restrictions. Uh, the only qualification is that you enjoy singing the Messiah. And that's what, that's what makes it such, an, such a beautiful event. Well, my name is Lane Satterblom. I'm a car inspector on the B&O Railroad. I uh, basically, my job is to inspect inbound freight cars to look for damage and safety hazards so that uh, the cars that 
that do have defects can be sent to a repair track and be repaired. Well, I look for damage to the uh, friction bearings, hand holds that are bent, safety appliances, uh, air brakes that are defective, brake beams worn out, falling down, couplers broken. Well, it's been about five and a half years. But uh, prior to that, I was uh, a graduate student, a uh, caseworker for public aid for two and a half years, a cab driver, unemployed, and then the railroad. I was working in the West Side Ghetto. I enjoyed that aspect of it, but the bureaucratic, uh, the oceans of paperwork and the stifling bureaucratic atmosphere. I mean, I, I did a tour of duty, and that was the end of it. And uh, my job now is almost a polar opposite. No bureaucracy uh, hanging over my head. No, uh, nobody looking over my shoulder. I'm outside, I'm moving around, and I don't take the job home with me. I don't think about it when I leave. When I was in high school, I was in the Glee Club. And that was pretty well the end of it. Once uh, I got out of my teens, it seemed like uh, that thread of my life was lost. Well, a lot of my energy now is involved in photography, 35 millimeter photography, and uh, I've been active politically, and uh, my friends, my relationships. Well, I have friends who, uh, in a men's group who had gone last year and had a fine time, and it seemed like a real happening, and uh, they put together a big party this year, and I went, and. Uh, and bought a score and decided to go. And uh, Orchestra Hall is a beautiful place. And the acoustics will probably knock our socks off. Well, my name is Sister Mary Chrysantha. I had been going to, uh, to the Messiah with a friend of mine for about three or four years before that. And when we first heard about this in the newspaper, I think it was, and picked it up in one of the columns, we just thought it was exciting. And so uh, we got the tickets. The uh, college is a two-year liberal arts college. We have about 400 students. Most of the time, I administer the library and take care of the staff and uh, promote the instructional program. We um, are constantly on talking and interacting with faculty and with the students, with the administration of the college, and uh, with my own staff. I think I found something for that uh, manual of yours on uh, the worker here. Our library program is uh, a unique one in that um, we are constantly uh, doing this kind of interacting with students. We monitor the students' uh, reference materials and teach them how to use these materials as they go along. At Christmas time is a place time when Messiah is usually done, and yet it is not strictly a Christmas oratorio. Just being a part of that 3,000 people in, in Orchestra Hall um, and everybody singing it and singing it as if your whole soul was in, into it, made a very beautiful piece of music become even more personal uh, for someone who couldn't even begin to go to a formal uh, glee club or chorus or choir. And it, it, we just got caught up in the whole thing. Uh, it was a real religious experience because you found all these various people carried along with the music. In three hours, you live all of salvation history and appreciate again what Christ has done for us. And there isn't anything more glorious than, you know, in the glory of the Lord.
Well, I don't know if I was standing next to someone tone deaf or not, but I'm not so sure I'm that good. And so maybe the one next to me felt that way about me. But I do know that there are plenty of very, very good singers there. And I think they're the ones who, who carry those of us who are not exactly that polished. I'm Christopher Moore, founding director of Chicago Children's Choir. Chicago Children's Choir is in its 23rd season. In various rehearsal groups around the city of Chicago, we meet with four or 500 children a week from eight and nine-year-olds on up to the nine teens and twenties. By the time that kids are asked to give up their Saturday mornings to the choir, they have progressed to the point in their technical training that they begin to understand what's in the whole process for them. In one sense, in one sense, certain kind of detail work done by us when the audience has a hundred people for each one of us, where the participants ranks have a hundred people for each one of us. Ain't nothing we can do to be an insurance policy on diction, cleanliness, or anything else. But at least let's not let down our own habits. The initial you know, the business of getting across to kids what discipline know, involves, and that it is primarily self-discipline, this is the tricky, basic so process of training. Dog, dog, three, three, four. you're dragging your feet. This goes like a house of fire. Hillis does not take it slow. One, she doesn't slow down one whit because of 2,500 people. If anything, she tries to push it a hair faster. One, two, three, four. The main difficulty with the Messiah is simply its length and its occasional technical difficulty. Uh, an eight, nine, or 10-year-old is not necessarily ready to sit still that long and to work on that many fugal passages in detail. See where I'm starting? It's your second phrase in that section. Three, four. But I don't hear the good. I hear a will. Back it up to the bass entrance. One, two, three. The whole idea of do-it-yourself performance is marvelous for people of all ages people can get deeper, more intensely into the choral experience than they might be able to in their own neighborhoods, in their own small groups. Because it's a marvelous coming together of the community that occurs no other way here in Chicago.
is Melvin Gray. I'm a psychiatrist. I have a wife and two children. The do-it-yourself messiah reminds me somewhat of my, of, of my youth when I used to go to, uh, to meetings where people would, would sing and there was a real feeling of camaraderie. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, I was raised in Brooklyn and uh, from Brooklyn we'd go up to uh, Washington Square on Sundays at times and hear Pete Seeger. We also had an awful lot of records, uh, uh, these 78 records, and we would get a Victrola out and wind it up and put these records on. You'd listen to Pete Seeger or you'd listen to Paul Ropes and, uh, or some of the other singers. Uh, we used to, uh, as I reminisce about this, uh, go on the corner and the guy would come by with a, um, uh, with an egg crate, stand on the egg crate and give a talk on politics. That was my really first introduction to politics. I can remember listening to that five, six, seven years old. It was, it was just as often in Yiddish as it was in English. You never knew quite what he was going to talk, but any language that they talk, we all seemed to understand in the neighborhood I was raised in. The Messiah is one of the few things I've been to in recent years where I felt this feeling of community and camaraderie that I experienced as a child. Uh, I don't see in, in, the, in our current complex living situation, at least in mine, which is, uh, I suppose, upper middle class living, uh, uh, people having that much concern for people. Uh, there, there's a certain distance, a certain coldness. There's even a lack of family unity today uh, from what I see, not only in my practice, but in my social life. And the Messiah kind of, kind of brought this back out to me, and I had a lot of fun and enjoyed it, and I felt fulfilled. On the string to start. And I will say. All nations, I'll shake the hands, the earth, the sea, the sky, land. All nations, I'll shake. And the desire. whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant to be delighted. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Put in a pair of glasses, please, at letter A. The soloists are professional soloists. And uh, the reason for that is that for the piece to have a coherence and a continuity, the soloists have to be able to deliver the true dramatic uh, content of each of the recitatives and arias. Half the time it's together, other half of it's two and three and four. Longer, Now she's down. And sing. And it's long. I'm acquainted with grief. I look at what I do is 
doing something I like with people I like, for people I like. And that's, you know, that's pretty important to me. And this, this job kind of uh, um, uh, encapsulates all of that. And, it, you know, and it's, uh, there's something too to, to working in a friend's house that uh, it, it's nice and you know, like a, a little guy running around, you know, it's, uh, it's nice. With the big one? Oh, you can do it. Okay. Hey, 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 can do it. All right. I do like to do things where I can leave some uh, uh, personal stamp. I can leave some part of me there. Um, you know, I've been thinking about it. You know, uh, at first, you know, going to the Messiah because it was something that it, it was a group thing, and I really gave no thought to it. Since then, I've been wondering, you know, why why do I go? And then it's the, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it's fun. It's great, and uh, you know, like I. I got to tell you before that the Sopranos, they're great. I, I go just to hear them. Uh, um, it's, well, it, it has to do with um, looking forward to something at this time of year. Um, being raised Catholic and not, not being a practicing Catholic anymore. Um, I, I'm coming up dry, you know, with just depending on gifts. I don't, I don't like that. Um, and so this, uh, I think I have to, ad to admit that this is something that I do look forward to. I look forward to this. This is becoming like a, a ritual. I'm Carolyn Wanglin. I was a music minor in college, studied voice and piano. My husband also did a lot of choral work in college, and we both miss it tremendously. But when we heard about the Messiah, we thought it was a perfect opportunity to do a little choral work again, and we both know the Messiah, and everybody likes it. We got a group together to go to the sing-along Messiah and decided to have them rehearse and make a little party out of it before we went. So we're all gathered tonight making spaghetti and making music. or so that we've got here tonight, there isn't anyone who's sung it with the sing-along before. And everybody's very excited about it, uh, from Jenny, who's nine, to um, the older folks in the group. Everybody uh, is really excited about getting a chance to sing the Messiah.
basically. I mean, you were supposed to be singing alto with me instead of playing the piano. I realize that, but we really need it. I mean, I'm the only alto here. When I find the note, I'm all right. Jenny, sure, she's singing soprano with her mother. We're not tremendously religious persons. Um, I think that if I had to state a religious feeling at all, it would be stated in music entirely. My name is Barbara Griffin, and I'm the choir director of a sanctuary choir here at First Baptist Congregational Church. Our church is located on the near west side. It's an area of the city that uh, I believe it began with Germans that lived in this area. Uh, it changed over to a black area around the time I was a little girl. We were in a very historic building that was built in 1869. 
It's one of the few churches left in Chicago from that era. Every president of the United States had spoken in this church up to John Kennedy. We have sung the Messiah for many years in our church, both since we've been here and before we came here. As a matter of fact, my mother began the Messiah with the Black Baptist churches on the west side. Her, she was the first one to bring it to the west side, and I've had a tradition of Miss Handel's Messiah since 19, I better not say how many years, but about 1945. <laughs> right, we were going to have at least 11 people going to the Do-It-Yourself Messiah, and I went last year myself, and it was just fantastic. Um, Ms. Hillis, who directs that, is just out of this world. She is an excellent director. And this is our last rehearsal, so this is the time when I get the orchestra together with the soloist. That's the first part of our rehearsal. And then the last part will be the choir itself with the orchestra organ and piano. I got a phone call. Somebody said uh, they, it was a little bit late for them. Uh, they hadn't sent in for their tickets. What are they going to do? And, you know, it's almost heartbreaking to say no. It seems like there's such an overwhelming need to want to be together with people, other people doing the same thing, something of a creative nature, something maybe with some religious or very emotional uh, kind of musical attachment.
Here, at least, we can come together and be one and participate in something that we have a very strong, close feeling about, and we sort of step away from all the cares of the world and participate in something that belongs to us and wish maybe that when we leave, things were a little bit better, you know, there were more people singing in the song. And of course, more people should be singing in the song.
This program was made possible by grants from the Albert Pick Jr. Fund and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.